Welcome to JSA TV, where we're covering the latest stories, trends, and innovations from leaders in global connectivity, real estate, and the networks within. I'm Buffy Harakitis of JSA, and joining me today, we have the expanded leadership team here from Tonaquin. Um, we have Mike DeVito. He is the CCO. Mike, Buffy, welcome. Hello. We have Terry Morrison, CTO and COO. Very good. Thank Terry, you. Terry, welcome. And we have Govar Bavaja. He is the CFO of Tonaquin. Thanks. Buffy. Yes, gentlemen, welcome so much here to JSA TV. And Tonaquin is the premier data center solutions provider for mid market organizations in high growth emerging markets. Yeah, and you're growing your leadership team. We're all here together at PTC. Um, we're so excited to have you. Let's dive right in and discuss Tonaquin's position in the digital infrastructure industry. Specifically, in what ways has your organization? been preparing to provide clients with the highest level of solutions and services. I know there's an acquisition that comes into play there yes. and some expansion. So why don't we start with you, Mike? Sure. Thank you, Buffy. Uh, as you noted, uh, Tonaquin is a, is a hybrid IT data center provider. We are very much focused on mid-market enterprises in emerging markets at the moment, principally west of the Mississippi, so in the Mountain West and in the Southwest. We have a, a platform that extends from St. George, Utah to Boise, Idaho, and most recently, our newest acquisition, the EdgeX facility in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. So we're here celebrating that. It brings us some capabilities we didn't have before. Uh, it brings us a market that we didn't have before, a market that's growing. But more importantly, I think we're here celebrating the new leadership team that we have here. In the last several months, we've added to that significantly. So to your point about how are we preparing for the market, we're preparing for that market and its growth and to serve our clients, not only by extending our platform, but by investing in our leadership team. Terry joins us from EdgeX at our COO, CTO. Gaurav has been here for a while now. I came over a year ago. So we're really pleased to be able to expand the team and our platform as we continue to grow and serve these clients, most of whom, by the way, we know that really need us from an IT perspective. They just don't have the resources to tackle these larger IT tickets. So, Yeah, for sure. And we talked a little bit about that uh, new data center facility in Oklahoma City. Um, it does expand, obviously, your existing platform. Why don't we dive in a little bit more about that facility? It's a purpose-built tier three data center. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit more about that Absolutely. as a CTO? Yeah, yeah. sure. Thank you. Yeah, you know, we acquired, we finished the transaction. It was uh, early uh, November. So we're glad that I have that, that facility uh, in, in, obviously in our portfolio. We're in the process right now of recommissioning that data center. So we're putting in new infrastructure, new UPS systems. We have existing liquid cooling in place. So the data center is going to be well positioned for uh, any AI loads, high density. Uh, we expect to have that online in uh, early April. All right. And right now it is a minimum deployment of uh, 2.5 megawatts. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. <coughs> Today in 2024, we'll have the 2.5 megawatts available. It is scalable. We can go to eight megawatts gross or 12 megawatts critical. Uh, so we have additional capacity that we can put in place in the subsequent years. So it has plenty of capacity and growth uh, for our customers. Okay. And as a CFO, mm -hmm. a big role that you have there for sure, right? <laughs> uh, the investment. Mm -hmm. So not only the investment uh, from a financial perspective, but the investment in people, including obviously this leadership, wonderful leadership team that you've put together here. Why don't you talk a little bit more about that investment and the benefits that it has put into place for your company? Yeah, no, thank you, Buffy. So I think um, as Mike mentioned, uh, we are backed by DIFF, which is a 17 plus billion euro fund. And this is a key part of their strategy to kind of really invest and grow Tonaquint as a mid-market tier two, tier three uh, market focused data, data center business. Um, and, you know, us being here, our recent acquisition of Oklahoma City, and then we're looking at other assets as well. That is an indicator of kind of the commitment that DIFF has to our platform and, and to growth. So it's it's a it's a kind of ongoing journey, but we are here, and we are you know here to kind of serve our customers in these markets, in the tier two, tier three markets. Yeah, and when we talk about your customers mm -hmm. um, and success for the long term, obviously this acquisition is part of that long term success for not only your company but obviously for your clients, uh, those mid market 
organizations in these high growth areas. And it, it does align closely with all of these different solutions that you have this customizable portfolio of cloud, colo, uh, infrastructure as, as a service, DRAS. Mm-hmm. Uh, why don't you talk a little bit more about that for us, Mike? So our intention is to build a platform, by the way. I just want to be really clear about that. Like, we're not going to stop with what we have now. As Gorev mentioned, you know, we have significant financial backing. Uh, by the way, as an, as, a, as a, just as an aside, we're very focused on asset ownership. We feel like that gives our clients comfort, quite frankly, that we own the assets yeah. moving forward. But our idea is to continue to scale that platform. We find that our clients are really moving in that hybrid direction. I know it's a, an overused term, but they are, in fact, consuming co-location, uh, virtual cloud services, right? And interconnection, right? We operate meet me rooms, we have interconnect facilities, all those things. And there's other situations that might be interesting for them, managed security, other platforms that will be growing. So it's important for us to keep growing that in a scalable way. But most importantly, while we do that, to retain that high touch, sort of very intimate relationship we have with our clients, they value that they come to us as a trusted advisor, if you will. So as we scale the business, I think more than technologically, keeping that client focus, that client centricity will be the most important thing for us. And we'll have to work hard to keep you earn their trust. Yeah. I mean, especially when it comes to like managed security. And Mm -hmm. so, I mean, you mentioned that hybrid, you know, IT was an overused term, but the reality is, is that that's the way enterprises are going in today's market, especially you know, like you mentioned with managed security services and the cybersecurity, the more sophisticated these uh, fraudsters are getting in the market today, right? So Tonequin offers all of this. We do. That don't we do. Know. We do. And just one other quick point. Um, I think the other thing that we're well known for is knowing what we do well and staying with that. Like I think, you know, one thing Terry and Gorov and I and the team have been talking about is how do we continue to grow? How do we continue to stay in our speed spot that adds value to our clients without straying too far in other areas that may not add value to them? So, so Terry, why don't you tell us a little bit more about your client base and maybe some of the acquired um, clients that came with the acquisition? What industries are they from? Why don't you give us a little bit more details? Healthcare, finance, I'm seeing. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, so Oklahoma City was really an asset transaction. So that facility was was in play and waiting to receive customers. So Mike can talk to the actual market. We did a full market study. We know what's there and available. Obviously it's energy, it's a oil and gas city, but it's been diversified over, over the years. So there's lots of industry there. Uh, number 20 on the MSA, I think is around that area, 1.4 million. So there's plenty of opportunities uh, for our customers. Uh, but again, today, we're actively recommissioning the site, so we have not brought any customers in. That'll start with Mike and you okay. want you to. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Mike, you want to talk about a little bit the, the, who we're looking at in that, in that area? Yeah, thanks, Terry. Um, so just on that point, like I would say that, let's say prior to the EdgeX acquisition, mm-hmm. our, our base continues to be very focused on regional businesses in a few key verticals. One, regional banking. Okay. So credit unions, banks, insurance companies, regional healthcare concerns. And these are... 15, $16 billion businesses, large in their own right, right? But very regionally focused, okay? Uh, tech is another one. And last, but certainly not least, is transport, notably in the in the trucking stroke transportation model. So we love those four verticals. We know them. We do well there. We feel that Oklahoma City, and frankly, the Southwest at large aligns with that. Particularly in Oklahoma City, we love the GDP and population growth metrics. And as Terry mentioned a moment ago, strong energy vertical representation there, but I think also a morph away from energy dependence, if you like, to other key verticals, finance, healthcare, biotech, etc. So we love the, let's say the KPIs, the wider metrics of that market, and we love the Southwest at large. And the adjacency, by the way, we get other markets in the Southwest from Oklahoma City. And it's a good reflection of what we're going to be looking at as we grow through our M&A process. There are tier two, tier three markets that are underserved. Maybe there's an incumbent or one or two other uh, operators there. So as we look across the U.S., I mean, Oklahoma City is a good example of where we're, where we want to go and how we, what we want to represent from uh, our data centers. And the 10 to 20 megawatt range is really where we play. So that, that's, that's your purely, sweet spot. Yeah, sweet spot, purely in the retail colo side, yeah. along with the many services that we already mentioned. So we'll continue to grow those services as well. Uh, the small to medium, medium enterprise is really what we'll go down market or up market, of course, as opportunity uh, shows itself. But 
again, that's really where we, we want to stay. Stay away from the NFL cities, right, that, that are crowded, if you will. Uh, and, and we also have plans to do some greenfield builds, right? So in order to ensure that we can support the emerging AI workloads, the higher density, uh, replicate a lot of capability that we have in Oklahoma City and in in those newer cities. So we have land that's available to us. We're constantly looking for other opportunities as well. Uh, for land banking, making sure power is available, connectivity, is, of course. Uh, but again, we have a lot of growth plans. I think that's key uh, that we're not here just to continue to operate what we have, but to grow uh, at a fairly high rate. The velocity that we need to grow uh, is is probably a very important point. So, yeah, and just to add to that, um, so the other part of it is right now we're in St. George, we're in Boise, we just added Oklahoma City. What we are truly looking to do is basically build a nationwide platform, right? So if you think about all the dots on the map and all the places where our customers may need us. Um, I think those tier two, tier three markets, but distributed all over the country, that's the most important aspect for us. And that's part of the management team and that's part of the platform build that we're trying to execute on. To Terry's point, you know, we have a pretty aggressive growth plan, acquisition, greenfield development, brownfield development. But I think we just need to kind of continue to execute on that and, and really a big part of this is also continuing to understand where our customers need us to be and where we are right now and just seeing how we can fill in the gaps and including kind of, you know, expanding the set of products that we have. We're looking at other things and, and really kind of broadening out the, the solutions that we can bring to bear for our customers. Yeah, especially when you talk about the customers in the technology, the healthcare, the finance, and the transportation vertical, mm -hmm. uh, they're obviously expanding to more digital uh, services and technologies, which brings me to the next question about the, you know, artificial intelligence and machine learning and some of these emerging trends, which are actually driving uh, these industries closer to, you know, these markets in the edge where, where you guys are expanding. Mm -hmm. So Tonaquin is growing. So congratulations, fellas. And uh, let's talk a little bit more about market predictions. When we look at the market five years from now, the increase of AI and ML, I can't even begin to say how many times we already heard it here. We're only in our fifth interview today. Um, but let's talk about the trends and what Tonaquin anticipates uh, on the horizon. Mike? Um, well, thank you. Um, uh, I'm going to defer to Terry on, on some of the, the more technological trends. But one thing that serves our business well, not only Tonaquin, but our industry, is just the continued growth of demand. There's no slowdown in it. Right. I've seen figures of 150 zettabytes of new right. data creation. There's depending on which analyst you believe, it doesn't matter. The numbers are huge. It's going up and to the right. That speaks well for us. And and related, by the way, I think that the development of the hyperscale platforms also speaks well for our model because those hyperscalers are going to end up putting smaller workloads in these tier two markets and these high growth markets. And that's where we're going to be hoping right. to serve them. So uh, I think overall, that's just demand creation, whatever the technology might be, AI, ML, Edge, whatever it might be, whatever right? The next it's just, it's is. just going and going and going. And I feel fortunate to work in an industry where it just it's going up and to the right, the demand. So, Me too. I think the densification, right? I mean, we're, we're finally seeing that. The enterprise workloads really stay pretty static as far as the, the, the size, but we're starting to see that go up now as well. And then, of course, as Mike mentioned, all the hyperscalers, the public cloud, SaaS providers, they need the AI capability at the edge. So we are going to have to support higher densities, uh, which is actually good for us based on floor space. We just need to add the additional power and cooling. And then the products themselves, we mentioned that earlier. We're squarely in, in public private cloud. Uh, we have DRAS, VAS, we'll continue to grow those platforms, but security is a, we mentioned earlier, is gonna be a big foray as well. So we need to develop those products. Uh, so we have the full solution. Connectivity, we haven't mentioned. So we're going to continue to support our connectivity needs through, through our private network, also through, also through peering, through exchanges, uh, on off ramps. Uh, we we started this uh, earlier this year. We're we gonna, did. We're going to put that in our other sites, including Oklahoma City. So uh, a lot of moving parts. Uh, we've got a lot to do and then continue that growth. So I think the demand is not the problem. It's just trying to meet that demand and be where our customers, as Rob mentioned earlier, be in the right places, right? Identifying those maps. There's dots on the map where we need to grow next. Uh, so we're looking forward to that. Great. And much discussed, by the way, that the AI ML topic is big. But from my own perspective, one of the great things about getting the EdgeX facility is uh, in the Tonequin portfolio, it's the first 
liquid cooled capability that we have in the portfolio, and that'll be key to the densities that Terry's talking about for these 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 more you know developed workloads. So that'll be great for us. We have not had that previously, so we do now. So that's definitely important, of course, especially as sustainability continues to be exactly. uh, such a priority in our industry yeah. and, and the world. Yeah. Just want to add. You know, I just. Exactly to your point, I think doing all of this while finding the right balance of ESG and, and renewable and non-renewable sources, I think that's going to be critical. And then the only thing to add to the water cooling technology point is we are, so we have that in OKC. We're going to look to kind of expand that in the way that makes sense in our existing portfolio, other assets, and then also beyond that as we acquire more assets. So we now we have the know-how, we have Terry with us, and we can continue to build out that expertise and provide that as a solution to our customers. Well, gentlemen, it's been such an honor to have Thank you guys you, here today. Thank you. Great to Congratulations be here. Thank to the Tonico team and everything that you guys are doing to continue your uh, strategic growth yes. uh, in 2024. And it seems like far beyond. Oh, yes. Uh, so congrats again, guys. And to our viewers at home, thank you for tuning in and stay connected. Happy networking.